Hey everyone and welcome back to another Nails and Networking video. As you may or may not have heard, a brand new version of Kali Linux was just released on December 6th. This release includes new tools, um, a few bug fixes, and some performance enhancements. That said, I am going to show you in this video how to download and install this new release of Kali Linux as a guest virtual machine inside of VirtualBox. Now, to make sure we get the most out of the new release of Kali, I will first be showing you how to quickly download and install the latest version of VirtualBox so that we will have both the latest version of VirtualBox and the latest version of Kali installed. And once we get both VirtualBox and Kali installed, I will then show you how to make some configuration changes and install a few additional pieces of software to make VirtualBox and Kali work together to create not only the best performance, but the best possible experience for you. So with that said, let's get to it. All right, first thing we're gonna do is open up a web browser, doesn't matter which one, and we're gonna head over to virtualbox.org. We're gonna hit the download VirtualBox button. We are then gonna select Windows Hosts, and we're gonna download it. Now, if you're on a Mac, you could obviously click Mac here, or if you were using Linux, you could go in here and select your uh, distribution. We're gonna wait for this to download. All right, download is complete. We're gonna go ahead and show it in folder. We're gonna right click on it and do run as admin. Okay, we are going to, at the first box, we are going to hit next. We are going to leave the defaults here with the only exception being if you wanted to change the install location, now would be the time to do it. I'm not going to, but if you did, now would be the time to do it. Everything else default, hit next. And this is just warning you that there may be a blip in your network connection while installing this. This is due to VirtualBox installing its own virtual switches, virtual um, network cards and things like that. So go ahead and hit yes. You won't really experience anything. At least I never have. This is saying, um, do you want to install Python Core and the Win32 API dependencies? If you have these installed, this would be my only warning. If, if you did have these already installed, be, be careful downloading the version VirtualBox once because it may overwrite your existing installation versions. And if you have other software that's dependent on those release versions of Python or uh, Win32 API, you might end up breaking those. So just be warned there. We're gonna go ahead and hit install. And it goes pretty quick and we are done and that is why i wanted to get this done before we went and installed kali linux because it's so quick it's kind of a no-brainer just to get a fresh clean install so now we're going to move on to getting uh, kali linux installed let's go ahead and close out of here close out of here and what we're going to now do is head over to kali.org once the page loads hit download and you're given two recommended options out of the other eight. We want to go with the one on the left that is labeled installer images. This is an ISO image that will give us direct access to the hardware and no overhead and overall much better performance versus this pre-built machine that is more tailored for you want a quick installation. We're actually going to do this from scratch as if we were installing this on a physical piece of hardware. So we get the best possible performance out of VirtualBox and Kali Linux. So we're going to click on it. And you're going to go down here and you are going to have a few options here. You want to make sure you select the 64-bit option that is the weekly release. And you're going to go ahead and click the download arrow right here. And then you're going to have to wait. And I will come back to you when that is done. Okay, looks like the download finished. So let's get this installed, shall we? We're going to open VirtualBox. We're going to go to a new. And you're gonna name this whatever makes sense to you for your Kali Linux box. I'm gonna go with Kali Linux 2022.4 so I can tell what it is. Here, folder option, this is gonna be where the actual virtual machine is gonna live. Meaning whatever size hard drive you have and however many snapshots you take and whatever config files there are, it's gonna need that much space wherever you put this. I'm going to leave it the default because I only have one drive here, but you may want to relocate this to a different volume if you are low on space, or if you just wanted to silo all your virtual machines in one you know, hard drive or um, at least a different folder off um, somewhere else. Uh, the ISO image, this is gonna be the installer. So we're gonna go ahead and browse and we're gonna go do downloads because well, you go wherever you downloaded yours to. Mine is gonna be download, which is the default for Chrome. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open and there's nothing else to do on this screen. So we're gonna hit next. 
this screen memory i'm going to leave it at two gigs for me because i'm in a lab if you have the available resources i would bump this up to four uh, if you had a lot of extra um, ram to spare you could go ahead and bump this up to eight and remember since you're in VirtualBox, you're only going to be using this memory when you have Kali Linux open within your Windows machine. So if you're just sitting and you're not even in VirtualBox or Kali Linux, it's not gonna take up any of your memory. So just an FYI on that. Uh, same with your uh, processors, I'm gonna bump this up to two. And again, this won't take any resources unless you're actively using this virtual machine. Now this gets a little different. This will actively take up the hard drive space. So there's, you're not gonna get whatever you put here back. So that's why we do not check pre-allocate, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. I'm going to leave this at 25 gigs. This is a good size for Kali Linux. If you plan to do a lot of downloading, um, you may want to bump it up, but you can always expand this later. So I figure um, keep it low because you can always expand later. And that is exactly why we don't click pre-allocate full size because when you pre-allocate, it actually allocates that whole 25 gigs or whatever you um, allocated there immediately. Whereas if you don't click it, it only expands it as needed. So if we only take up 10 gigs, it's only gonna take up 10 gigs, but it has a maximum of spandability of 25. As of now, you can go in and change that later, like I said. We're gonna leave all the other options unchecked. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna look there, just make sure everything's good. And then we're gonna hit finish. And there is our virtual machine. Well, I should say there is our virtual machine, virtual hardware. We haven't installed the operating system, which is now what we're going to do. All right, to start the install, real quick, we're going to check and verify that our ISO is loaded here. This would be the equivalent of if you were doing this on a physical machine, you would have put the DVD installer in the DVD player. And that's what we just hid. We are now going to start it up and we will see the splash screen, which is the VirtualBox equivalence of a BIOS screen, if you will. There we go. And now we're going to get the install menu for Kali. And first things first, first time you, you do this and you click into the blue menu here, you may get a prompt that says, we've captured your mouse, blah, blah, blah. Basically what it's telling you is to get out of this window because right now my mouse is captured there. You see, you can see it move around a little bit, but up here, I can't click on anything. As soon as I hit the right control key, it frees the mouse. And now the menu is open too. If you wanted to get out of here, you know, you could minimize down. Uh, so it is annoying because if you didn't know any better, there's really no way you can get out of here. Uh, so again, that's uh, right control. So we're gonna continue now. We're gonna hit graphical install. So hit enter. And now we're gonna get a few mount errors. That's normal. Um, Linux does this. It's looking for um, like the SDA is uh, the first hard. It's just, it's finding, looking for all the mount points that aren't there. So that's why it throws up those errors. Nothing to worry about there. And now we are at the uh, language selection. Select whatever language you want. I'm English, so I'm gonna go with English. And then your location, wherever you're located, it's like that. And then this is your keyboard or key map layout. I am again, I'm gonna use American English, hit continue. And we're gonna get a couple screens here and we're waiting for it to get where it's gonna ask us for our host name. And shortly. Okay, go ahead and name this whatever you wanna do it. I'm just going to go ahead and do, all right, actually, you know what? I'm just going to go and just go with Cali, shorter the better, right? Dot NN, that would be my domain. If you wanted um, a domain, you would just put it after your host name. Go ahead and hit continue. And now you're going to select a username that you will log in with. You obviously have the root username built in, but this is going to be another user account that's not root for security purposes. You can always su to root or sudo, I'm sorry. Um, no, you could su too, but you could use sudo instead with this user because it will be added to what's called the sudo group in Kali Linux. So you will be able to get root rights with it, um, but this is just for security measures. You want to go ahead and have a non-root user as your default. I'm going to go ahead and do, you do whatever you do. Uh, and then I'm going to hit continue. And we're going to have to put a password in here. Go ahead and select your favorite password. And we're going to hit continue. And now it just wants to narrow down. You picked where you were. Now it wants to know like a little more where you are. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it on Eastern. And now we're going to get to the partitioning of the hard drive. It's going to want to set up two partition ones for one for swap and one for uh, our main drive. I'm going to go ahead and do guided. And I'm going to say, use the whole disk or use the entire disk. The only reason you wouldn't want to use the entire disk is if you were using an actual disk that you selected that you were sharing another uh, virtual machine with. We didn't do that because we created a brand new one from scratch. So we should be good as long as we all click the right buttons along the way so far. So go ahead and hit continue. 
and you're going to want to leave that on this. The reason it's a little more than 25 is because, again, that swap partition is going to be in there. That's just going to be about a gig probably. We'll find out in a second. I would go ahead and leave this selection, all files in one partition. No need to change them at this point. And there you go. And that's why you're going to see it because we're getting the primary is going to be 25 gigs. And that's going to be right here on the um, root directory. And then the swap file. The swap file is the equivalent of a page file in Windows. It's virtual um, virtual memory, if you will. So it, it will take up a gig, a gig of space, but you know that's minimal. You could bump this up a little bit. If you, if you selected eight gigs of memory as your install, you would want to do four. If you did two or um, four, you'd want to do two. It's half of whatever you picked um, as the actual uh, physical resource for VirtualBox to use earlier on when we picked uh, two gigs. Hope that makes sense. Go ahead and hit continue. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select swap, use as swap area, sorry. Go ahead and hit continue. And then how do you want to use this partition? You need to go down to swap area, hit continue. And then you need to do with done setting up this partition. And then you can see it's happy now. Primary is going to be on the ext4 um, file system. That's what you want. And you want swap to be on swap. These are the mount points. And what you can do is then click finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And the uh, final warning is just letting you know that, hey, uh, we're going to do this. Anything on this will be blown out. You hit continue. And then at this point, it's going to do the uh, install of the base system. And once that's done, I'll come back and grab you. All right, the base install is done, and now we are at the menu where we are going to select our uh, desktop and our um, tool selection. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as it is. If you want to do install GNOME or KDE, now would be the time to do it. Uh, and then I would leave the uh, tools uh, as they are. So we're just going to go ahead and hit continue. And then it's going to do its final thing where it's going to retrieve 2,412 packages and then install them. So once again, I will come back to you when this is done. Okay, it finished with the install. It is now at the Grub bootloader. And this is kind of something we don't have to worry about because we're installing on our own hard drive that we just created. What a Grub bootloader is, is it's asking you if you are dual booting like Windows and this on the same hard drive, usually a physical hard drive. Um, do you really want to install this? Because what happens is once Grub installs, it's going to overwrite the um, master boot record and it's only going to show Kali Linux so that you will have no way to, unless you go back in and you know how to edit the uh, partition table, you won't be able to get back into that Windows box. That is what this warning is for. You don't have to worry about it. You can go ahead and hit continue. And what you're going to want to do here is just go ahead and select this option here. We do not want to do anything manually and hit continue. And it's going to finalize the install and we're about ready to reboot and boot up Kali for the first time. All right, it's finished and we are good to go. So what it's telling you here is to remove the um, bootable media as if you still had a CD in the CD player. I'm pretty sure uh, VirtualBox is smart enough to remove it after it's installed, but to check, if you, went go, if you went ahead and booted it and it kept loading the install screen like it was trying to reinstall, like you actually had a CD in a physical machine and it was booting off of it, you could go and check. You'd go to settings, storage, and you can see it's empty here. So we're good. VirtualBox nowadays should be smart enough to take that out after the install. If not, that's where you would go. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. And we're gonna go ahead and reboot and boot into Kali for the first time. Here, you're gonna go ahead and just let it do boot the default. And you can see the Kali splash screen. And pretty soon we should be at the login prompt. All right, login's up. We're gonna go ahead and log in using that user you created earlier in the process and the password you created. Go ahead and log in. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a terminal and I'm gonna do a few ping tests just to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and ping out to our buddies at uh, Google. All right, so we're getting name resolution because it, it uh, translated Google into an IP. So let's just go ahead and do Google the other way. All right, so we're looking sharp there. Um, let's do an NS lookup to tesla.com for giggles. Too many O's. All right, so we're getting that. So we're looking really good here on the network side of things. We're getting out of the uh, virtual box infrastructure, and then we are actually getting out through our default gateway on our actual Windows machine and getting out on the internet. So we're looking sharp there. What I want to do next is, is change the display because this is way too tiny for me. And to do that, we're going to go to the Kali menu, upper left corner, and we're going to type in display. 
Go ahead and hit OK. And just pick whatever works for you that fits within your screens. I'm normally on uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, and that's just, if I do if I do the same size as um, my normal native resolution, it just, it gives me a scroll bar and it's kind of obnoxious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to 1440 by 900 and see how that looks. Okay, I'm happy with that. I don't like a scroll bar and it gives me enough real estate to work with. So that's how you're gonna change your display settings. And let me think, I think we're good to do the next part that I wanted to do. And so to do that, we're actually gonna go ahead and shut down this Kali Linux machine real quick and make a change in VirtualBox that will allow future virtual machines we create to see each other. So we're gonna create a NAT network. And to do that, we're gonna go into VirtualBox. We are gonna click on tools. We're gonna to click this little menu here and we're gonna to go to network. We're gonna to go to NAT network and we are going to click create. And then you can rename this whatever you want. I'm just gonna name it NN NAT network. Uh, I'm going to leave the subnet and range alone. I'm good with that. And I'm gonna leave DHCP enabled. I'm not going to enable IPv6 and I'm gonna hit apply. And really the only thing I would suggest you change is the uh, network name. And then the last thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to go to the Kali Linux box. We're gonna to need to go to settings. We're gonna to need to go to network and we're gonna to need to change this. Well, it looks like it already did it for me. So that's great. So it, it already changed it. If yours was set on the default, which it should, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and change it to NAT network and then the network name you selected, hit OK. And you'll need to do that for all future machines you create in order for them to see each other. So that's the networking thing you need to do in here. And there's one other thing I wanna do in here, which I'll show you now. And that is gonna be a quality of life improvement. And to do that, we're gonna right click on our Kali Linux box, go to setting, and we're gonna go to general and we're gonna go to advanced and we are gonna enable shared clipboard, which will allow you to, for the most part, drag and drop files between Kali Linux and your Windows host operating system. So that's why I said it's quality of life. It allows you to cut and paste between Kali Linux and this Windows machine. And the other thing we wanna do is back in settings and it's gonna to be to set up a shared folder that will allow you to copy files. Um, but instead of having to cut and paste them, you can just have them live there. So instead of having to move, let's say you had like a two gig file you needed to move, you didn't wanna cut and paste it, you could just put it there uh, and then both machines can live with or can work with it at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new. And I already created a folder that I wanna share and I put it on my desktop. So you, what you would do is you would need to do the same and browse to it at this point. This is gonna be the Windows folder. So remember that. So I'm gonna select shared and I'm just gonna leave the name as shared. I'm okay with that. Again, that's what it's gonna look like on my desktop, which you can see right here. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, apparently you can't see it right there. Uh, and then I'm gonna use the mount point of slash MNT and then shared. And I'm gonna hit auto mount and hit okay, hit okay again. And I just wanted to show you that. That's what I was trying to show you earlier. Here's the shared folder. Obviously we can see it in Windows, but now we'll go ahead and boot up Kali and make sure it's there. All right, let's go ahead and make this full screen here. And we're gonna go ahead and log in with an Kali user. You would log in with whoever you are, obviously. I'm gonna go back in here. And there we go. And one thing to note, I have noticed even when we change the display size, if for whatever reason it decides to not cooperate with you, you can actually just go ahead and minimize it down. And Kali will readjust. So if you were to like make it right here, it will readjust. So, but but you just what you should be able to click it on full screen and have it look like this. So you might need to uh, adjust it. Even when we went over to the displays, I forgot that you could actually do this. So, uh, just an FYI. Um, and let's go ahead and look here, and let's see if our shared folders are there. So if we do, uh, we have a shared folder there. So let's go to it, and we're in it now. And so let's just, if I could type. Let's touch the uh, test. And now if we go out to Windows, see if we have a folder or a file in there, we do. Let's go ahead and put a file here and we'll go back, or we'll just put a folder here. And now we go back to Kali and let's see what we got. There you go, two-way transferring, pretty cool. And let's just get rid of all the junk in here. And there you go. So that is the uh, two quality of life settings I would suggest you enable for um, VirtualBox and Kali Linux. Now let's move on to the uh, few pieces of uh, software I wanna show you how to install and to do one or two minor configuration changes and we'll be good.
And the first thing I want you to change is going to be your root login. Uh, the, the reason that is because obviously you go out and on the internet and you Google Kelly Linux root password default, it's going to be all over the internet. So we're going to change it. And to do that, we're going to do a sudo password root. And you're going to go ahead and hit enter. And you're going to go ahead and change. Well, actually, first, it wants the password of the um, user that we did during the setup. So go ahead and hit enter. And I bet I typed it wrong, so hopefully you have better luck than me. And now it's asking you for the new password for root, remember. So whatever you make this, make sure you write it down or keep it somewhere safe because without this, you won't be able to um, su to root or log in with root. So that's the first important thing you need to do. Second thing is check for any available updates. And you're going to do a sudo apt update, hit enter. And it's going to let us know that it has none. It has 107 available uh, packages, but those are not for Kali, so we can ignore that. And the next thing we want to do is install a uh, terminal multiplexer known as Tilix or Tilix. I'm not exactly 100% or 100 sure how to pronounce it to each their own. I call it Tilix. So what you're going to do is you're just going to type in Tilix. And it's going to say, hey, you don't have it, but do you want to install it? And you're going to hit yes. And then it's going to go ahead and install. And what Tilix is, is a terminal multiplexer where if you type it in, I can get rid of this guy, check it out. We can go ahead and maximize it. And let's say we wanted to run a top over here, but you're like, you know what? I need to do something else. Instead of having to consistently open another um, terminal, you could go ahead and just click the either plus button here, and then it would actually show up under here. Or better yet, you could just say, okay, I want one underneath it. And look, there's, you could have a top down here and up here. You could be, you know, you wanted to, you wanted to know what's out going on, what processes are running. So you get the point. And you can also have them on the side. You can have them as many as you want. So it, it is nice. I can't give you a great example right now because I'm not really doing anything. Um, but you get the point. It can be very helpful. So you can exit out of all of them. Or you could just hit the, the X over here. And that's good there. So let's go ahead and cancel out of this. Last thing I want to show you is it actually lines up perfectly with what I was showing here is uh, a better version of top. This is top. Top is a uh, kind of like a task manager for Windows. Uh, but I want to show you something known as HTOP, which is a newer, uh, more graphical uh, friendly. Uh, I shouldn't say graphical friendly or more eye pleasing, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to type HTOP. And it's going to say, you do not have it. Do you want to install it? That's the theme of the uh, day today. Hit yes. Pseudo password. Hit that. It's going to go ahead and install it. And then we're going to clear it out. And we're going to do HTOP again. And look at the difference here. And it, it not only does it look better, it also has a lot more functionality. Like you can search by hitting F3. You can filter. Uh, you could sort by if you hit F6. You know, and it gives you different options. Let's say you wanted to sort by user. And now they're sorted by, you know, you could see who's running what. Then you hit F6 again and you want to go by, um, let's just say you wanted to go by percent CPU. Who's using the most CPU? So you get the point. There's a lot of other options. You could do F9. And if you knew the process, you could kill it. I'm going to hit escape because I don't have anything. And then you just do F10 to quit. So it's a lot more um, pleasing to the eye and it does have a lot um, more user-friendly functionality. So I think we've met all of our uh, objectives. We've installed VirtualBox, we've installed Kali Linux, we made the custom configuration changes, we made some quality of life improvements, and overall, I think this has been a successful video. So if you have enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. We have a lot of content coming out. Check out our other videos on the channel, and uh, have a great experience with your new uh, Kali Linux box. Have a great day. Thank you.